Assalamualaikum, my name is Nora Shika. Today we would like to present our assignment about effect of dispersion on optical system. The content for this presentation first, introduction, adjective, methodology, result and discussion and conclusion. First, for the introduction, in this assignment, we focus about the chromatic dispersion and Gaussian pulses. Chromatic dispersion is a phenomenon in optical communication system where different wavelengths of light within a pulse propagate at different speed, causing pulse spreading and degradation. Meanwhile, a Gaussian pulse is a best shield waveform commonly found in electrical or optical pulses. Dispersion in optical system cause pulses including higher order ga Gaussian pulses to broaden. Objective of this assignment First, to characterize both analytical and true simulation the effect of dispersion on optical system. Second, to evaluate how the length of fiber optic affect the performance of an optical transmission system. Third, to compare the first order and fourth order of Gaussian pulses. Third, to familiarize the student with the usage of optical software. My name is Muhammad Zarfa Meyasullah. Uh, we will proceed with the methodology of this assignment. The procedure for this assignment start with the Opti system software is open, file is clicked and new is created. The schematic diagram is constructed as shown below. Then the bit sequence of the user defined bit sequence generator is changed to 0, 1, 14 zeros and the sequence length in the layout parameter is set to 16 bits that allowing for injection of single pulse. Then, the power and the frequency of the optical Gaussian pulse generator is set to 0 dBm and 1550 nanometer respectively. In the optical fiber component, the attenuation effect, the order dispersion and self-phase modulation are disabled. Next, in the PMD tab, the biofringent style and the differential group delay are set to deterministic and 0 respectively that can create an optical fiber model which include the group velocity dispersion. Next, the sample per bit is set to 256 to increase the simulation accuracy while keeping the simulation time low. The length of the optical fiber is set to 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 km accordingly. The order of optical Gaussian pulse generator is set to 1. Then, the simulation is run by clicking the calculate button at the top pane. The dual part optical spectrum analyzer and dual part optical time domain visualizer are double click to view the graph. Then, two marker A and B are placed on the half height of the signal at the optical time domain visualizer and optical spectrum analyzer precisely to plot the TFWHM and omega FWHM respectively. The result of the graph are recorded. The step 8 until 13 is repeated using the higher order of Gaussian pulse, which is 4 for the TFWHM. Next is result and discussion. For question 1.1, calculate the time delay after 50 km of propagation between two frequency components separated by 2 nm and with a dispersion parameter of 16.75. So, by using the formula of delta t equal to ld delta lambda, so we can get the value which is 165 picosecond for the time delay. Next, for question 1.2, derive an expression for the angular frequency as a function of a delta lambda using the formula c equal to omega over 2 pi time lambda. So, this is how the derivation is done, which is last answer in the chain of angular frequency is equal to 2 pi over lambda squared times the speed of light and delta lambda. Question 1.3 For an optical pulse of constant phase propagating in a normal dispersion fiber, which frequency component will be detected first to add leading edge of the pulse? So the answer is for an optical pulse of constant phase propagating in a normal dispersion fiber, the component with lower frequency detected first as it will move more quickly in the direction of the leading edge of the pulse. My name is Aisha. I will explain on the effect of dispersion on pulses. This section is to analyze the breeding of gas and pulses by answering the question which is plot the TFWHM as a function of distance and determine the relation. Okay, this is a schematic circuit diagram for first order gas and pulses. Uh, the time delay is set to negative 0.51 nanosecond to make the input and output graph is not overlap to each other. The optical fiber length will be changed from 0 km until 50 km to observe the broadening of gas and pulses from the dual port optical time domain visualizer. Then, this is a simulation result obtained from the optical time domain visualization when we set the optical fibers length to 0 km. 
we observe that the input and output have the same amplitude but the width is different. The output width is slightly wider than the input width. The different value of A and B marker in the graph represent FWHM value which is 4.39 exponential negative 11. When we change the layer of optical fiber to 10 km, the graph for the optical time domain shows that the output's amplitude is shorter than the input amplitude. Also, the output width is slightly wider than the input width. The different value of A and B markers in the graph represent the FWHM value is 4.93 exponential negative 11. For 20 km of fiber optic, we observe that the graph for the optical time domain visualizes that the output amplitude is shorter than the input amplitude. Also, the output width is slightly wider than the input width. The different value of A and B markers in the graph represent the FWHM value is 5.2 exponential negative 11. For 30 km of fiber optic, we observe that the graph for the optical time domain shows that the output's amplitude is shorter than the input amplitude. Also, the output width is slightly wider than the input width. The different value of A and B markers in the graph represent the FWHM value is 5.92 exponential negative 11. For 40 km of fiber optic, we observe that the graph for the optical time domain shows that the output amplitude is shorter than the input amplitude. Also, the output width is slightly wider than the input width. The difference of A and B markers in the graph represent the FWHM value is 7.08 exponential negative 11. Lastly, for 50 km of fiber optic, we observe that the graph for the optical time domain visualizes that the output amplitude is shorter than the input amplitude. Also, the output width is slightly wider than the input width. The different value of A and B markers in the graph represent the FWHM value is 7.4 exponential negative 11. From the graph, I tabulate the data into a table that contains TFWHM values when the fiber optic distance is varied from 0 km to 50 km. Then I transform the data in a graph of TFWHM versus distance. Based on the graph above, the relationship of the graph is the duration of the pulse burdens linearly increase when the distance of optical fiber increases. It is because the time delay between various colors become larger as the distance traveled by the pulse rises, which causes a linear increase in pulse burdening. As a Gaussian pulse, uh, travels and optical fiber dispersion lead to slight variation in the speed at which different wavelengths of light within the pulse propagate. Consequently, this discrepancy causes a time gap between the arrival of distinct segment of the pulse at a specific location. Therefore, the optical pulse burden as an out outcome of the time delay. Next question asks, by using this setup and default setting for the group velocity dispersion, plot the omega FWHM as a function of the distance, determine the relation. To answer this, we can see the graph for optical spectral analyzer that shows the input and output that overlap with same exact shape. The different value of A and B markers in the graph represent the omega FWHM value which is 2.23 exponent negative 10. The value is same for all optical fiber length from 0 until 50 km. The graph here illustrates the constant value of omega FWHM even though the line is increasing. This means that there is no change to the spectrum or the spectral wave of the pulse and the function of the distance because the default setting of group velocity dispersion or known as GVD is zero. GVD is a property of medium that causes the group velocity of a pulse to vary with frequency. This means that the different frequency of light travel at different speed in the medium. As a result, the pulse of the light will spread out as it propagates because the different frequency in the pulse will travel at the different speeds. So if the GVD is zero, then the group velocity of the pulse does not change with frequency. Hence, the pulse will not spread out as it propagates and the spectrum of the pulse will not be broadened. The graph here illustrates the constant value of omega FWHM even though the line is increasing. This means that there is no change to the spectrum or the spectral wave of the pulse and the function of the distance because the default setting of group velocity dispersion or known as GVD is zero. GVD is a property of medium that causes the group velocity of a pulse to vary with frequency. This means that the different frequency of light travel at different speed in the medium. As a result, the pulse of the light will spread out as it propagates because the different frequency in the pulse will travel at the different speeds. So if the GVD is zero, then the group velocity of the pulse does not change with frequency. Hence, the pulse will not spread out as it propagates and the spectrum of the pulse will not be broadened. 
Next, the question asks, does dispersion modify the magnitudes of the frequency components and does it affect the phase or time delay of the frequency component? To answer this, firstly, we have to know what is dispersion. The dispersion is defined as the phenomenon in which the phase velocity of a wave depends on its frequency. This means that the different frequency of light travel at different speeds in the dispersive medium. As a result, a pulse of light will spread out as it propagates because the different frequency in the pulse will travel at different speed. The magnitude of the frequency component are unaffected by the dispersion because the amplitude of a wave is independent of its frequency. However, the phase of the wave does change with frequency and this is what occurs the pulse to spread out. Hence, plotting the real and imaginary parts of the spectral component it will show a change because the imaginary parts of the spectral component represent the phase of the wave. As the pulse spread out, the phase of the wave will also change and this will be reflected in the imaginary part of the spectral component. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Hafiz Waburi bin Muhammad Mazuki and I will be presenting about the effect of dispersion on pulses which is the broadening of higher order Gaussian pulses. So the question is to change the order of the Gaussian pulses to 4 and plot the TFWHM as a function of distance. So here I have made a modification uh, to the Gaussian pulses uh, to fourth order. After we change the Gaussian pulses to order 4, so this is what we get, uh, which is for the 10 km propagation, which is for the short distance, the TFWHM value uh, gets smaller. Meanwhile, from 10 km to 50 km, which is the higher propagation distance, the TFWHM value increase until 10.61 exponent power of negative 11. For this part, uh, we still on the broadening of higher order Gaussian pulses, but uh, the question has to explain the strength behavior of the full wave half maximum for short distance and state uh, are the TFWHM the best method for measuring spreading and compare to the first order Gaussian, the fourth order spreads much more quickly and by comparing the spectrum of both S and S plane Y. So the, this is the answer for the question, uh, which is explain the strange behavior of the TFWHM value. And for answer is uh, TFWHM smaller for short distance uh, due to the pulse spread out from main pulse, which is causing center pulse thinner and shorter. So uh, the next question is state uh, either the TFWHM is the best method. So the answer is, uh, TFWHM is best method to measure spread of same pulses type, but there are better techniques for different pulses. Uh, for the last uh, question, the answer is, for higher order Gaussian, the spectrum is more larger, means there are larger difference in group velocities for frequency component. In conclusion, the outcome from this assignment, students successfully can investigate how chromatic dispersion affects transmitted signals. Besides this assignment, observe the broadening of the Gaussian pulses between the first and fourth order. First order and fourth order Gaussian pulses can be distinguished by their temporal duration, pulse form, spectral characteristics, sensitivity to dispersion effect, shape and length of the pulses. From that, they will become familiar with OptiSystem software that are used to analyze and understand dispersion when evaluating the dispersion properties of various fiber samples. Therefore, students discover the way optical fibers introduce dispersion resulting in pulse burdening or distortion.